Okay guys, so let's see in this video how to remove the intake manifold and replace the gasket. Replacing the gasket is not the only reason you have to remove the intake manifold. Like for example, if you want to remove the starter or replace the head gasket on the engine, you have to take out everything which is attached on the engine head. So in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. And hopefully you're going to find the issue you're looking for and fix it. With the T30, remove these bolts which holds the cover on. Let's disconnect this vacuum hose from the vacuum pump. Let's disconnect the intake hose. There is a seal clip in here. So just take it out of the holes. And the intake hose comes out. Try to place it aside here. In my situation is cut it. I will tell you another video why. In my case, I've got the coolant out. So I'm just going to disconnect this coolant hose to get a lot more working space in here. Next, let's disconnect the AGR valve, which is hold it on by three bolts on the intake manifold. So use a E10 or a 8 mm socket will work the same. E10 is much safe to use. And you've got one on the bottom here. The bolt from this corner is a lot longer. Next, with the E12, let's remove this bracket, which holds the AGR valve on the power steering pump. Here they are. On this side you've got the hose which connects the AGR valve to the exhaust manifold through the engine head as I will show you. So you can basically disconnect it from that point or from this point. Just take it out from this point. Disconnect the vacuum line as well. And the AGR valve is off together with the bracket. Next, we got to take care of this fuel rail and remove it from here. Let's first remove the connector from the fuel pressure sensor and from the fuel pressure regulator. Next, we have to remove these high pressure fuel lines from each injector. So use a 14 millimeter wrench and slowly untighten these nuts. Okay. Once you loosen them, you should be able to remove them by fingers by hand. Let's do the same on the injector side with the same 14 millimeter. And do not allow any dirt to go inside the line because once you install this back, that dirt will go on the injector and it's a very high chance that it will clog it up. And very important is to cover these ports because the dirt can go inside there as well. I'm going to use aluminum foil because it's easy to mold it. So once you remove a line, take a little bit of aluminum foil and place it on the threads. Up here, you've got the fuel return line, which comes from the fuel pump in front here. So let's disconnect it from here. Usually it has a clip, but this one is broken. So if you have the clip, you got to press on these two tabs and you can release the line. Now, if you look down here on the fuel filter, we can disconnect the input line. I'm going to use the oil filter socket, which is universal. Now let's disconnect this return line from the fuel rail with a 17 millimeter socket. You've got this nut here. Okay. And finally, we can take this apart like that. Here is the washer. Try to not lose that. Let's disconnect this delivery line, which comes from the fuel pump. Let's disconnect this line. Then disconnect the same line from the high pressure fuel pump with the same 14 millimeter. Then with the E10, you've got this bolt, which holds the bracket with the fuel line on. And from this point, make sure that the fuel doesn't go on the serpentine belt because you're going to have problems in the future. 
Now the fuel rail is connected on the engine head with two E10 bolts. So because this bracket is in the way, I'm going to use an 8 millimeter wrench with 12 points and that will open loose the bolts and here it comes the fuel rail let's put some aluminium foil on this thing as well next let's remove this fuel filter from here use the e10 socket and you're gonna find three bolts and now the fuel filter assembly should come out but first we gotta release the power steering reservoir as well because down here the leg is under the power steering reservoir leg next let's disconnect as well the power steering reservoir so be prepared to drain some fluid out of here like that and with a pick or a screwdriver just release it from here from this point be prepared to catch the fluid And on the bottom of the reservoir, you've got the return line, so release that hose clamp as well. All right. Next, let's focus on these three brackets. We've got this rusty one and then these two, which are made of aluminum. So with the E10, we've got a couple of bolts in here. Let's take care of this. There is one more hidden back here. All right, so now the bracket should come out. Now let's remove these two brackets as well with the same E10. With the same E10, you can continue and remove these inverted torques. You've got two of them on top and then you've got one bolt in each one of these holes. Let's start with the most difficult one, which is in this hole here. It's a good idea to get a magnet, something like this. Here it comes. If you look from this side, you're going to find a bolt here and one down here. Right, so it looks like we gotta take out the thermostat housing as well because it doesn't allow me to move the intake manifold in here. So again, use the E10 and remove these three bolts which holds the thermostat housing on the engine head. The thermostat housing is out. It's a good idea to use some aluminum foil again to block this hole. And now let's see, this should come out. All right, different story now. And we still got these wiring harnesses which goes through. So down here under the intake manifold, we gotta disconnect the wire from the starter, from the starter solenoid. So use a 10 millimeter and disconnect the bolt from there. You can also use a long extension like this, much easier. Now we've got the connector for this intake runner. So Let's unplug it, like that. Now you can pull out these wiring harnesses with the connectors. So the connector is unplugged, cut these zip ties. The intake manifold is out and now you get access to the runners and everything else around here. Now on the intake manifold you're going to find the runners which should allow you that extra boost from the turbocharger to enter into the cylinders. In my situation I found this link disconnected from these two flaps. So if for example this link is disconnected from this one then only one will work. Make sure that you've got a good connection in here. More importantly check it out for carbon buildup because in my situation there was a lot. As you might guess, if you have a lot of carbon buildup in here, then these flaps are going to get clogged and you're not going to be able to close this or open it. So as you can see, if I disconnect the link from the main 
flap which moves all of them okay and let's say i close this flap once i release it it opens itself but if you connect the link and try to do the same with all four of them then it gets stuck and therefore when you get less air it means that you spray more fuel than necessary and that's how you get black smoke or bad fuel economy or that very bad smell especially after a cold start so the best way to clean this is to use a very strong solvent which can dissolve the carbon and then you use high pressure water and these flaps are going to be clean then after that if you want you can just lubricate a little bit these points so as you can see now the flaps can return by themselves this intake manifold is ready to be installed not before removing these gaskets so with a pick let's take out the gaskets you know that the gaskets are worn up when they do not sit a little bit above the level the surface the contact point of the intake manifold because once you connect this intake manifold on the engine head these gaskets are not going to seal anything so it's a very easy way to get vacuum leaks and that can mess up a lot of things on your engine now if you look down here you can get access to the crankshaft position sensor the starter the engine mount down here if you take out this bracket then the engine oil cooler and the coolant hose which connects to the engine block you've got a lot of carbon in here so it's a good idea to clean up everything so i'm gonna go from this to this a lot smoother surface for the gasket to fit and seal now it's time to run the wires through the intake manifold from this point the installation is the reverse process of removal so i'm not going to show it to you because i know that you guys are not going to watch it a couple of tips is to put the bolts in order and you know exactly step by step what to do all right guys that was pretty much it job done hopefully this video is going to be useful for you in your situation if so give it a thumbs up and check out the other videos I made about this car. There is going to be a link in the description below with the playlist. And if you are new to this channel, click that subscribe button as well. It's free for you and it's going to motivate me to make a lot more videos for you guys in the future. I've got a lot of ideas and plans. So that will depend on how many people are interested to watch these videos. So stay tuned and I will see you soon.